Hello, this is David Wormsey. This video is slightly experimental in the sense that I'm showing you where I am up to so far on trying to add project management into our clients' WordPress installs. My ultimate aim is to be able to set up a starter or boilerplate WordPress install that I'll use to jumpstart all projects. And that will allow me to give clients just one login, a password where they can go into their site. And this will take care of all of their onboarding, their training, their way of being able to communicate with me during the build and even leave some information for them to manage their sites later. That's the ultimate aim. And in some ways, it's a follow on from a video I did a little while back, which was on a premium plugin called WP Admin Pages Pro. And I've been using this, let me just show you this in the starter site to onboard. So it has a little customized welcome message and a start here for anybody new going into WordPress. And that leads them to a section on the help desk, which I've set up, which has a getting started page where it contains some videos about how we're going to run the project. And part of that's what I'm covering today, which is the project management side, covering kind of our project tasks over here. And I'm gonna cover this. Well, I'm not gonna cover in this video, and I may not do a video on this until I can kind of work out what some of the competition is out there. But what I'm using for design feedback is something I got from AppSumo user back. It was a, a fabulous deal. And it's allowed me to, on our, um, pages here where we've got this set up. I can just put in this button here and they can go and draw on their screen and give me the feedback that I need. And this is a kind of separate system. So I see very much the design feedback as a, a very separate thing. This is something that I often don't get so much with clients, but I will get much of the sort of traditional project management stuff that isn't related to any particular page. So let me just go into our project tasks over here. Typically, what they'll be talking about is sort of features. We'll be talking about certain brand elements and what they have and kind of content and all that kind of stuff. We'll be talked about here, launch dates and all conversations like that. So this is my page. I am using WP Admin Pages Pro here to put this header on here. You wouldn't need to do that. You don't need that plugin to do pretty much what I'm doing in this video. I have used it again on this page to add some of our tasks into various status and present those as a Kanban board view. I don't know why I struggle over saying that, Kanban board. Okay, so it's got to do, doing, and done here. So all we've really got here is a custom post type and a couple of taxonomies for different types of tasks and the status of those tasks. And either me or client only needs to go in here and it's just like WordPress. You go in, add a new task, add a title, add some content, and hopefully the clients will start to use these to put them under certain task types. I expect they will probably forget, and I will do that, but that's just useful to have it for me to organize those things. And that's it. Press publish. That will then send whoever needs an email to say that this task has been created and what's in there. And as soon as that's published now, if you go to the front end, someone can also add a comment. There's no comment section here at the moment because there's a, no published post, but there will be. And I've set that up with under settings so it's organized so the latest is at the top. So just using WordPress here. And let me just go over to the calendar that I've also set up here. This is just using a free plugin that's what we're doing here with all of this. And what it does is allow someone to go in and set up something, a meeting wherever they like. So put in a title, the content, select a time, and they will need to remember to set this to schedule because we're using WordPress to do this. So what's gonna happen is that an email, as soon as this is scheduled, it'll send an email to who needs to know saying that this task on this date is happening. And with it being WordPress, it'll automatically go from scheduled into published. And I've also got that set up. So it will also send out another email so we know that task is happening on that particular time. 
Okay, so we've got a kind of reminder set up. Now, it's not perfect, but this is pretty much all I need. Now, let me go back to my blog post here. I'll just cover the steps I went through. I'm sure many of you who watch this will can work out what you can do yourself on this one. The two plugins I'm using is Better Notifications to improve our notifications, and I'm using, as it is, the Editorial Calendar to organize how those uh, posts are showing under tasks. Okay, so that's the shortcut. Let me just mention first why I'm kind of doing this, because this isn't going to be at all relevant for a larger growing agency with lots of members there, lots of people doing tasks in a team, also dealing with lots of different stakeholders on the client side. This isn't going to be suitable. I'm not that type of business. My business has kind of changed to being more simplistic. In fact, I'm more keen about getting a client on board, doing a simple website, which is not perfect, and thinking about a long-term relationship, about improving these things over time, about doing more digital marketing. That's where I'm going. And largely, we've learned to just deal with one representative of an organization rather than try and communicate with everybody and keep them on board because it's the most effective way. Of course, if they want to buy my time to have meetings or to accommodate other people, then that's absolutely fine as well. But largely, we've found it works best to deal with one person because it's more cost effective. So really, it's just me and my wife and this one representative in there. So a big project management tool is probably a little bit overkill. But I have always used these. I used to use them in my old work. And then when I became a self-employed web designer, I just automatically thought I should have a system and look professional. So I use um, Basecamp. I moved to Trello. And more recently, I've been using Asana. Love all of these tools. I think they're great. And I'll still be using Asana for my own uh, personal purposes. But I've come to realize that it's a little bit overkill. It's too much of an ass to get a client to sign up to something new, to learn a new system when they haven't yet been taught really how WordPress works. So that's what I want to do with this, encourage them to learn a little bit about WordPress right from the beginning. And I think this system's going to do it. It also solves another problem that I had. I couldn't really give people some indication about how to use these third-party applications. They did more than we needed. And they would change because I had no control over it. It was their branding, it was their UI. They can change it as they like and add in more features. So it wasn't in keeping with the thing that I generally would be arguing for with clients when it comes to their designs and accommodating their visitors is to keep it simple. So that's why I've done this kind of switch, really. And, you know, it, it's amazing that I have not thought of this before because the alternatives have been under our nose all the time. You know, WordPress does have, as I'm listed here, uh, posts and comments. It has categories and tags which you're using. It has email notification system. just needs expanding on. It has scheduling. It has a media library where we can control what can be uploaded into that media and storage space with it. We have user accounts and we can set privacy as well. So it just seemed to me a little bit obvious that I should try and do this, even if it's not going to be the most perfect system. So, yep, it's early days, as I'm saying, and I've just shown you this, although at the moment I'm showing you as my administrator view so you can see all the plugins. What I would typically do when it comes to the clients is I would set them up as an editor, um, I'm able to set my page builder, Beaver Builder, to allow them to have everything that's in there, but I can still have them just as an editor so they don't get overwhelmed with the amount of information that is there. Now, I don't deny them, obviously, an administrator account. It's their website, but I do just set it up for their ease and tell them this. So the steps that were needed were obvious, really. We needed to first set up a custom post type, and I've set that up so it only includes the title, editor, and comments. Now, I'm not going to go into how to do that or the next step, which is to set up my custom taxonomies, which is the project types and project status. I've got a video, um, and I've got a link to it on my post at the bottom, which shows you how to use um, the plugin that I am using in this case, which is the custom post type UI plugin. I've also got another video which shows you how to do the same by making your own plugin for this because it's actually quite easy. It has to be if I can do it. So I've set those up. The only thing that I will say, let me just come out of this 
uh, calendar view and go into the main view is that I don't really talk about making sure that the uh, taxonomies are set up to show here so you can filter on these and also so when you go into quick editor they are displayed here as well but largely I think the kind of rule of thumb is you probably turn everything to true on your taxonomies and you're going to get what you need for these purposes but anyway just use my blog post and ask me a question if things aren't working and you're trying this out for yourself so that pretty much covers that I've mentioned the next step which was I needed to set up the notifications so I've used better notifications for WordPress I think this is a really good plugin it's got some premium add-ons but I actually don't need them in this case but I find it slightly reassuring when they can earn something from the plugins because I think they're going to be supported it seems a really good plugin to me and I've never used it before so what I've done is I've set up some uh, notifications that will come out you can decide who they're going to go to at a really granular level I've used user roles here but you can actually use individual emails and include and exclude who you like they each have a, um, a way of being able to just put the kind of content you want in it. Let me just go into one. So I've got one set up for comments when they come in, one for new uh, task posts, and also for scheduled tasks as well. Let me just go into that one. And what we can do is we can, as we say, set up who it's going to be sent to. We can use these short codes that they've got to put in the kind of content. So I'm using the site title and the uh, post date as well for this one because I want them to know when this scheduled task is for and then we can just set up our own brand and if we want over here and decide now I still haven't worked out exactly what's going to go in these at all but there's such a, a lot of options um, for what you can kind of bring forward so you can try that out for yourself let me just show you if I go over to my I did set this up yeah so this is what's kind of getting shown to me um, as you can see here, this is scheduled task and it's got a date on that and we've got a new task. We can actually do something, this is looking a bit of a mess here, we can actually with it use our gravitars as well and I could put my name under it. So I could have Mary receiving an email with a bit of customization with my picture on it if I wanted to do that as well. So there's a lot you can do with this plugin. I'm still working out a lot of this. Let me go back to here. Okay, I think that's all I need to say on that. What else do we need to talk about? I've already mentioned that I'd used, um, let me just find it, uh, for my Kanban board that I'd used uh, the uh, Admin Pages Pro plugin for that. I don't think I need to cover that. I think you could work out how you would need to do that if you're going to use that plugin. I needed to add in the editorial calendar here. Now, there is one thing to say on this, and I found this in comments. Once you install this plugin, it will add a calendar to every custom post type. So in the back end of my site, I do actually have one for the post, which I'm quite happy to have. So there's a calendar there. It's not using the same calendar, so it's just calendar for posts, and I'm using the calendar for the project task but what did happen is on beaver builder it's also got a custom post type for a theme uh, layouts i believe or a template layouts so i did need to make sure it wasn't showing there and there was a nice snippet here which i've included here so all you need to yes so it was templates so my beaver builder templates so if you've got other custom post types in there and you don't want this editorial calendar to show up um, you just need to find out what that is and put in the key there and put that in your themes functions PHP file and it will disappear as it did for me so that's that really let me just go and back into the calendar I think just to mention something about this there's nothing else to change with it. it just works as it is when there's just a normal task put there in the past as soon as we've moved on into the future then you can't do anything other than move them the only downside about this is that you would ne need to make sure that you've instructed them to send it to schedules i haven't set anything up for drafts or pending reviews and i don't know what i would do for an email so they have to do that to make use of what, how wordpress works it is quite nice in the sense that you can actually move this around so if i want to move this meeting to over here it will just move and because i've changed the schedule date it will also set off better notifications to send out 
that there is a new schedule um, again. So they'll know that there's been this change and be notified. And of course, when it's published, it ends up there and kind of largely uneditable again. And um, the email is sent for the new task. So it, I think that kind of works okay for me. All right, so the last thing I think I need to mention is that I needed to make these tasks private because of course we're creating posts at the moment and for me I think this is largely going to be taken care of because I'm using a come in soon plugin there's a I use the premium one there's a free version of that plugin which blocks off everything while you're building your site so all of this is kind of private to anybody who's logged in and I, I suspect at the end of most projects I will probably remove the plugins and delete all of the kind of content maybe i will export the content that's in that custom post type as some kind of record and get rid of it that's probably what i'll do so that's enough but i've also in this case i've added in um, because i'm using a beaver builder and thema i've been able to set the archive pages that are created and any external posts uh, as private ones for only logged in people i'm sure you can do that if you're using a different page builder as well so that's my extra privacy if i decide to go live and still keep it it will still remain private i haven't looked into other ways but i'm sure there are by using something like a roles uh, plug-in to just be able to set who can see what so probably something important to do because you don't want all the kind of conversations being uh, publicly there and I'll probably make sure as well that the um, SEO plugin is set so it's not going to index those as well just to be extra on the safe side and if you're a beaver builder user there is and I haven't tested it it looks really good from power pack they now have a module that's got the uh, coming soon on there so if you're using that you might want to use that as well Okay, I'm coming to the end, I think. Uh, a little bit waffly, this one, so apologies. Yeah, so a few concerns that I had along the way was the extra plugin and the database waste weight that would go with that I did a video just last where I've been sort of monitoring all of that it was fairly trivial adding in these plugins and of course if I'm removing them or just turning them off at the end there that's going to be reduced and I can clear out the database of course by just removing all of those posts so that kind of went um, I was concerned initially about one thing that I really liked about things like Asana and Basecamp is that the, the client could respond to the email itself without having to go into the platform well with this you do need to go in but i i now i'm at ease with that partly because it's getting the client used to how wordpress works so that's part of the aim of it to get them in there but also i found some issues with basecamp and asana because what would traditionally happen they could reply on that but generally they would start a new topic on one of those emails and the, the kind of back end that system kind of went out as well so this kind of controls a bit of that I think by not allowing them to be able to do that so I'm quite happy with that I've also left it free so tasks and comments can be free to edit so you can change any of these things I, I don't think that's so much of an issue and for me someone who makes so many typos on everything I do it's kind of nice to be able to actually change it for change uh, with the other project management tools you can't often change what you've written so I don't mind that myself um, concern about the plugins not being supported the editorial calendar um, is the doesn't have any way of earning money on that I think it seems to be pretty good. I did notice a few comments about it breaking on Gutenberg. I don't know if it actually did, but it did seem like they looked into that and fixed it. So I, it's working with it now. So it does seem like the support is there. One of the concerns I had a separate more with that one is the fact that uh, it does need some training to know what you're doing. You need to make sure that that client knows to uh, pick scheduling and understand WordPress. I mean, I guess it would be possible just to remove the other options from the plugin itself and just use that but i'm going to carry on using it as it is and get any of their updates with it so i think that's pretty much it i've come to the end of the video i hope this was useful um there is a, a cockle crowing in the background so apologies for that i am in in goa and i'm in the, the village so we get these kind of sounds anyway that's enough for me if you like this video then please give me a thumbs up please consider subscribing to the channel because i shall be doing 
more videos. I hope to, when I've got it really all sorted out, is to do more videos or one big video showing about my whole onboarding process that I've got so far because I'm putting a lot of work into it. Happy to share that. It's not going to be suitable, of course, for everybody, but uh, it might just be handy to see what I've done and I will share all of that. Yes, that's me done. I hope you have a nice day. Thank you again for listening to me and I hope to catch you on another video. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.